Hey guys, I thought I'd give you a little tour of the interior design of the van. This might not be the final design, but it's at least my dream design. I designed this all using a program called Shaper 3D. And I started by pulling images from Google that uh, was a floor layout and the side layout and trying to use some pictures that I found from an image search. This, I, I learned this in about two days, so you're gonna have to cut me some slack on uh, some of the inconsistencies. I designed the seats as close as I could to the original seats in the van using the images that I had. And I allowed them to swivel around because I actually have Scopema swivels in the van. So I wanted to replicate the function of those seats in the program. Then I designed the studio cabinets behind the driver's seat. These cabinets will house the refrigerator, a drawer for the toilet, a really deep drawer for all sorts of maybe a garbage can or something then uh, two electronic drawers. These drawers will have ports in the back with power and USB power so that instead of leaving all of my electronics and batteries scattered throughout the van charging in disarray, I can plug them all in inside the drawers, put the drawers uh, closed, and it's nice and neat. When I started looking at the design of the driver's seat and allow for a reclined position as much as possible, I found that there was a big dead area behind the seat, especially when I swiveled it around. So at the floor area below the swivel part of the seat, I put a uh, shoe drawer, a little drawer that you could put some shoes in. Uh, above that, I put a little shelf so that when the seat does flip around, not 180 degrees, but about 120 degrees, there's a shelf there that I can put a phone, there's an outlet below it, and maybe a cup of coffee can sit there and I can converse with other people in the van. The primary function of my van is to tell stories through video or podcast. So the back of my van is not necessarily designed as a bed like most other of these van life vans. So I have a U-shaped couch. In this U-shaped couch lounge, uh, it houses the electrical system, the air conditioning system, the uh, half of the over the wheel well water tank and the garage area. Actually, to say that it's a U-shaped couch is a little bit of a misnomer. It's actually more the shape of a J with a long edge and a shorter edge. A longer edge is going to act as my bed. It's about 95 inches long at its longest point, and it'll have a flap that extends out so that I can enlarge the bench area from 20 inches deep to about 24 inches deep. Beneath the sleeping area on that bench side is going to be the electronics area. It'll house a compartment for my four 12 volt, 200 amp hour Victron batteries, which will be wired in series in order to power a 48 volt, 200 amp hour system, as well as all of the electrical components like the Lynx distributor, the Lynx shunt, the Wake Speed 3000, Serbo GX, the inverter charger, and all of the components. The components are going to be built into a display box with a glass face that's going to be lit from the back. And when you walk into the van, the electrical components and the wiring and everything is going to be neat and beautiful and visible as you enter the van. It'll be a real focal point when you enter the van. All of the bench areas will be designed with ventilated covers. That some will be removable, but not all of them. And so as you easily remove covers, you can access different compartments within the van. I didn't want to put a lot of opening doors on hinges that I'm going to have to worry about opening and then closing. I just figured removable panels that I can set off to the side so I can access different component parts of the bench areas to access certain things that I might want to access to repair or maintain. The garage area will be divided into three separate areas. The first area will be devoted to ventilating the electrical components, as well as providing electrical ports so that I can plug in and use power from the back of the van. The center compartment is going to be just for large storage. And then the third compartment is going to be a watertight compartment with a sprayer shower, hot and cold access for water, and probably a fill for the water tank. As we wind around on the passenger side rear corner, you'll have access to my air conditioning system. This is a Cruise and Comfort 48 volt DC air conditioner and ductwork will extend up from the bench over the rear door and then across the 
overhead cabinets in order to deliver cold air across the ceiling and all the way to the front of the van. A center work table will extend up on a telescoping pedestal with fold-out flanges on either side so that the table can be about three different sizes depending on what I'm going to be using it for. Ideally, I want the table to set down into the U compartment area in order to fill in that space so I can put cushions on it and make the entire back area a bed. At this point, I want to mention the rear area of my J-shaped or U-shaped couch is going to be extra wide, the bottom area. It's going to be about 30 inches deep. The reason I did this is because I wanted a big sitting area where people could sit with their legs crossed Indian style or out in front of them without having them have to dangle over into the over edge of the bench. It might be more comfortable positions to kind of hang out and record podcasts. I'd like to have a removable jump seat that will sit in front of the table that can flip around and access the table or flip around and face forward when I'm driving if I'm gonna have a third guest. There'll be tracks inlaid into the floor bolted to the steel frame of the van as well as the ability to unlock them from the channel, fold it up and put it in the back for stowage under the rear garage compartment. Now the 32 gallon over the wheel well water container spans a distance from the short side of the J-shaped couch to the kitchen cabinet. And so I have designed a area there with L extrusion uh, made out of aluminum to reinforce that area so that if I do need to pull a water tank out, I'll be able to do that without having any obstructions. The panels around the water tank will be removable, not doors or anything. So I can literally just pull those out, move them off to the side and access my entire plumbing system if I have to. There's also a gap behind the water tank because the water tank wasn't designed for a dually like mine. It's designed for a single rear wheel, uh, rear end. And so there's about a gap of about three inches that is open behind the water tank, no matter what I do. So I'm using that area as a cross through for power as well as plumbing that will supply the kitchen area or go forward or backward to the water supply to the garage area. So now we come to the kitchen cabinets. A Rixon Enterprises heating system will be integrated into this cabinet to provide heating for hot fresh water, hot flooring, as well as hot air being pushed throughout the van. This is Rickson's hydronic heating fluid overflow box, and it's gonna sit right in this position and I'll be allowed to fill from the drawer above via a hole. This overflow box will catch and deliver all of the hydronic heating fluid that will be going through the different legs of its journey as it goes through to heat the van. This is where I'll get the hot air portion of my Rickson Enterprises hydronic heating system. Hydronic fluid will run through a radiator, making that warm, and then a fan will drive air through across into two ducts, one which will go to the front of the van and another which will go to the center column of the van, both on directional vents that I can push air where I want. In the area of the kitchen cabinet on the outside that will be open when the side door is open, I'll put an extendable shelf that will fold down. This shelf will be used for a little kitchen area or whatever I might need on the outside of the van. This shelf will be cut with a special CNC process that will give it a real three-dimensional look when it's folded up so the back side of it will be cut in a really really innovative way by a company called Just Roaming Design in order to give you a cool three-dimensional welcome to the van when you open the side door. Upon opening up the side door of the van you'll see an area that will be inset into the floor. This area will be a piece of CNC cut material that will form a functional shower pan that will be hidden when it's not in use. This shower pan will be designed in such a way that it will drain water into a drain that will go under the van into a heated gray water tank that will be bolted to the bottom of the van. The objective is to try to hide the shower pan as much as possible by having it blend into the floor texture, which will be a long strand top seal Spanish chestnut um, that will be making up the majority of the floor. A company called Perfect Fit here in Portland, Oregon is helping to supply this material as well as a Lone Ridge material which will make up the surface of the garage area and the surface of the utility areas. They'll also supply black tweed that will make up the walls as well as portions of the ceiling alongside a long strip that will go along the center of the ceiling that will also be the same material texture as the floor, the wood. 
The wall kit itself will be supplied by a company called Adventure Wagon and will be designed with locking uh, L track that will go and subdivide the walls as well as the ceiling into usable functional utility spaces that I can hang lights, hang cameras, hang basically anything from because it'll actually be built on an A-frame that will be reinforced into the van skeleton. The countertops will be black around the van and they'll be CNC cut with all sorts of interesting features. One section around the sink will actually be CNC cut to direct water into the sink area. The faces of the cabinets will be black as well, and you might be saying that's way too much black, and you have a point, there is a lot of black there, but the wood accents as well as the bodies of the cabinetry being white will help to play off that, as well as the cushions in the back, which will be like a cream color or a tan color. Power will be distributed throughout the van. I wanna make it a nice place for people to work and have versatility with people's uh, work life, as well as lighting, strip lighting will be accenting the tops of the cabinets, the kick plates, which you can't see because I didn't design them in there, but they are there. Kick plates will be uh, backlit, as well as strip lighting across the ceiling that will provide the primary form of lighting throughout the van. The overhead cabinets will be two stages. The area over the lounge, because I want it as voluminous as possible, will only be about eight or nine inches deep from the exterior walls. As you go over the cabinets, the kitchen counter or the studio cabinet, those sh shelves will be deeper, about 14 inches deep, and will act as a surface for me to mount cameras looking down into the cabinet surfaces if I might want to do an unboxing or a video top down. A company here in Portland called Just Roaming Design is going to help me with the build of this interior. And you're going to be able to see it all on my YouTube channel. So go and subscribe to that or check out my social media because I will be sharing with you the development of the interior step by step. They have a new shop opening up. They have a lot of new things happening and they've, they've really been excited about conquering this unique interior design for my tour. I've also done a lot of work to get to this point from the exterior components, the air conditioning system, the windows, the coatings on the inside, basically everything to get the van to where it is. I've recorded videos along the way. So if you have a chance, subscribe to the channel, dig into these videos and check out the history so far as I've been gathering components. There's a whole lot more. I'm sure I missed a bunch, but I thought it would be neat to kind of summarize this whole video with this three-dimensional render of the van. So what do you think? Let me know what I'm missing. Tell me some tips or thoughts on the design as I've put it together. I think it's pretty unique. I think it's pretty innovative and I'm super excited about it. I can't can't wait to see the van become a reality and I'd really love for you to join me on this tour. The end result is the ability to travel around the world and have a comfortable studio area that I can find interesting people from all parts of the world and go to them, invite them into the van, sit them down and let them tell their stories. Windows will be all around the interior area so you'll be able to see the world existing outside while we're having this conversation on the inside. I've thought this through quite a bit. I think I've dotted most of my eyes. I think I've dotted most of my T's. Wait, you don't dot T's, you cross T's. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty happy with the results so far. So um, I'm looking forward to actually seeing the real product. I wonder how much of this original design will translate itself to the final design a little bit later. Thanks a lot. Like, subscribe, share, comment. If you could share this video, I think uh, I'd love to hear other people's opinions on this design uh, from all parts of the world and be curious to see what they had to say. So thank you, everybody. I've involved a lot of interesting companies on this build. I will leave them in the screen so you're looking at all the different companies and components that have helped to make this project a reality so far. So very, very thankful for them. And I will be doing videos sort of like this, talking about the different stages and different components that I've used and why and specifics. So let me know if you have any questions and Just Roaming Design here in Portland is going to help me to make this a reality. Jago, bye.